welcome to the Watch and Cut channel. So tonight we got a pretty interesting video. We're going to be talking about this Alpinist right here. It's kind of a fascinating watch to me because of its long history, which I've been really looking to add to my collection. And thankfully my good buddy Jiro uh, sent this guy along and I was able to uh, get the full Alpinist experience. Try to be as accurate and detailed in this watch review, so I hope you guys enjoy my feature on The Alpinist. Welcome to Watch and Cut Channel. I wanted to discuss an iconic timepiece from Seiko, which has been around since 1959. It's an exquisite timepiece that was designed for mountain climbers, mountain workers, and outdoor explorers, the Alpinist. It's still a well-respected icon in today's Seiko lineup, now belonging to the Prospects line. This one, though, that we're going to look at tonight is not a Prospects line version. It is a collaboration with the ever-so-famous Hodinkee shop. And it's basically a Saab 017, but with a blue dial. Genius. So let's meet the maker. Seiko has demonstrated a list of watch accomplishments in the horology history. So I'll try to keep this brief. So let's start in the beginning. Seiko began in 1881 when a 21-year-old Kintaro Hattori opened a watch retail and repair shop in central Tokyo. Now, 130 plus years later, Seiko has become a worldwide known brand and it's well respected and it's also fairly damn reliable. Some of the brand milestones include the world's first quartz watch in 1969, beginning with the Seiko Astron, the world's first titanium 600-meter diver watch with the professional diver from Seiko's lineup in 1975. In 1982, the world's first TV watch, 1983, the world's first voice recorder watch. Also that year, the world's first quartz analog watch, which is even more notable. You may recognize this one from the movie Aliens, which is part two to the saga. 
This one is designed by Giorgiato, a very well-known designer of all kinds of products from cars to trains to products in general that you know and also a Seiko. This collaboration was very popular in the 80s and it was worn by Sigourney Weaver as the character Ripley and we can't forget the ever so clever spring drive mechanism that brings the best of both worlds really combining a mechanical mainspring just like any other automatic mechanical watch but the rotor also supplies an electromagnetic power to the icy quartz oscillator combining art and the elegance of an automatic movement but yet with the accuracy of a quartz movement which is generally in this watch plus or minus 15 seconds a month not a day but a month and the list goes on. You get the idea. Seiko's kind of a big deal. The Seiko Alpinist was originally developed for those who worked in the mountains of Japan. Or mountain climbers. And in general, outdoors people. Even some of the new models include a inner rotating compass bezel. Today, after many generational changes, the Alpinist still calls to the outdoorsman. Looking for a reliable companion when exploring the wilderness. The case is stainless steel and it's rated at 20 bars of water resistance or 200 meters as we know it. That's diver territory guys. And on top of that they brush down the ends of the lugs and the side of the case has an almost mirror high polish and both surfaces are separated with the high polish chamfer to accent the shape of the case, but kind of soften the edges. It also includes a large crown guard at the three o'clock position with a screw down crown that's shaped in a gear pattern for good traction. Below that, you'll see another crown for the inner rotating bezel complication. The main outer bezel is fixed and it tapers about 45 degrees with a high polish finish. The bezel is then topped with a slightly raised sapphire crystal. The sapphire crystal is great because it's basically the second hardest thing to diamond, which means it doesn't scratch very easily. On the back, you'll see a slightly decorated screw back case protecting the awesome 6R15 movement. This 2019 release commemorates 60 years of the watch's rich history. Being released in 1959, the dial is extremely attractive on the Alpinist. I love how the light dances off the blue sunburst dial, reflecting light differently at different angles, giving a different appearance at any angle. At a first glance, I felt like the dial might be a little cluttered, but when looking closer, I come to appreciate the larger high polished and slightly raised applied indices and the markers for increased legibility. The cathedral hands give this icon a military touch of inspiration. I also enjoy the short hour hand, allowing more space between the corresponding hour marker for easier identification. Although initially bright, it's not too long till they start to lose their luster. But then they kind of just keep lighting up for the rest of the night. And that's pretty impressive for me, considering this is kind of a field dress watch in some respects, but also can perform like a diver with 200 meters of water resistance. So I think the loom works just fine. The inner rotating bezel includes a compass, giving this generation of Alpinist an added complication compared to the old ones did not. The North northeast and northwest markers are colored in orange for a little bit easier legibility while the rest of the dial remains white in marker my only gripe with this dial is the lack of legibility under certain light conditions darker rooms the polished markers can catch some light if you tip the watch at the right angle but it can take a real effort because that dark navy blue dial can really drown out the markers in certain light situations. 
One huge detail I prefer on this version versus a lot of the prospect versions is the lack of that silly transformer looking X on the dial. As you can see, this one has a nice retro automatic and this feels classic because it's just like the OG Sarb, but with a blue dial. Although new at becoming a watch junkie, I can really appreciate one thing, the good movement. The Seiko 6R15 is Seiko's upgrade from the typical 4R or NH series that you see a lot. Nothing against those movements, but this is an upgrade. This version carries a 23 joule movement, but some 6R15s actually have 24 joules, depending on the generation. They all operate at 21,600 beats per hour and hold 50 hours of power reserve, unlike some of the Prospect's counterparts now holding 70 hours of power reserve. Honestly, if a watch has 38 hours of power reserve, that's plenty for me. It's also equipped with Seiko's Dioshock system. Plenty resilient, reliable, and it can be regulated to plus or minus one second a day. At $600 MSRP price point, you're getting a great deal at those specs. Man, quite a bit of performance, I must say. Now, due to the secondary market, as expected, for a limited production in low numbers. They have double or tripled in value. The factory straps are really nice quality and they're robust, durable, simple, and outdoors-ish. The lugs are the ever so desirable holy grail 20 millimeter, allowing you to personalize this watch, the strap monster. Jiro says that this one is an inexpensive Chinese bracelet but honestly, I really like the way it looks and the way it wears. I think personally, I would go with some blue canvas straps. Or maybe something else blue. Matches the blue dial to enhance the blue theme. Plus maybe something more outdoors-ish in nature and materials. More comfortable, durable, waterproof, mudproof, and water resistant. On the bracelet, it makes you want to pair it up with a nice shirt. It makes it appear dressier. This watch is quite versatile in all kinds of occasions, whether it's work, whether you're venturing outdoors, or whether you're going out to a party, and more than enough watch for any occasion. Yep, this could be the one and only watch. The box is nice. Not your typical Prospects box, from a samurai or a turtle, it does give you the feeling that you've just stepped up in the Seiko world with your purchase. The presentation shows in the attention with the sleeve that protects the contents of your new Alpinist. The box feels snug and almost airtight when opening it. A service manual, instruction manual, using the compass complication, the warranty manual, and when lifting the foam layer, there sits the straps. I'm very pleased with the unboxing experience and its content and presentation. The complication is actually quite fun on this one. There are some who critique about the crown placement. Perhaps some say it even looks odd or basically out of place. Perhaps some say that it's just distracting and the complication that it comes with is not merited. I personally don't mind it. I do agree. It's not very symmetrical in its placement, but its placement allows easy access to the crown to manipulate it. So that gripe is kind of bogus to me. The overall feeling when rotating the crown is ultra smooth and it's very satisfying. So here's how the complication works. If you're in the northern hemisphere, point your hour hand towards the sun. 
The spot between the hour hand and the 12 o'clock is south. And you can orient your compass bezel in that fashion to get your bearings. If you're in the southern hemisphere, just point your hour hand towards the sun. And 12 o'clock and the hour hand is north. And just adjust your bezel accordingly. Very simple to do on the fly. That being said, the choice of going without a screw down crown is going to make more sense. And this is another complaint that a lot of watch guys have with this model. Why not screw down the other crown as well? Well, it's pretty simple when you're trying to get your bearings. This is something you're going to do often and on the fly. And personally, I don't know about you, but if I'm doing this pretty often while I'm out traveling the woods, the last thing I want to do is bother with a screw down crown. So now it all starts to make sense. The placement and the lack of a screw down crown for the compass complication. The Alpinist is the second longest running series in Seiko's line dating back to 1959. I think the heritage alone says much about this iconic watch. I can't express enough how versatile this watch is. This is what I think drew me into the Alpinist in the first place. I have two gripes that I must mention though. First, the current Alpinist has decided to put this modern sort of transformer looking X as I mentioned before on the dial. So basically now it distracts from the rest of the dial. Basically, I can't concentrate on anything else. Two models in the first release generations that are very sought after do not have this. The Saab 017, which is iconic and classic, and this blue version. Get rid of the X, please. Number two, I tend to think I mind a Cyclops on a Seiko a little bit less than most. But I must say, I find it awful on the Alpinist dial. It just doesn't belong there. I find it very distracting. Almost finding the date number to be so magnified, it overpowers the rest of the dial. And most of the time, the date window just doesn't match the dial color, enhancing that effect. Are these deal breakers for the Alpinist? Not for me. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of nitpicking. But it's just my opinion. I do prefer the blue dial because it looks younger. But I find it not very legible under low light due to the dark dial absorbing the light. Currently, the SPB089 seems to sit around $1,500 plus. Dollars. I guess I can live with the green one just fine. And if that fails, in the end, I'll probably get the Yeti version. And just have to live with the Cyclops and the X. One advantage to the Prospect line is the added power reserve. They have upped it to 70 hours, which is pretty impressive. So overall, the Prospex is an upgraded model when you really look at it. But purists will say otherwise. And I can completely understand, and I'm kind of starting to feel that way too. The modern Alpinist can still be found on people's wrists everywhere. And with this new complication, I really enjoy it. And find it to be an awesome tool watch. So I encourage you to check out other Alpinists out there. Currently, my favorite interest is this 1959 reissue that they've released recently. It's fascinating to me, and so is the Alpinist history. The modern Alpinist can be found with or without the complication, and in different colors. It's very upgradable with straps, and the price is very suitable for most people. And the watch is so versatile, you can literally wear it to any occasion. How can we not love the Seiko Alpinist? Hope you guys enjoyed tonight's feature. Please don't forget to subscribe. Leave comments down below. What do you guys think about the Alpinist? Which one's your favorite? Which one do you own? And remember to watch before you cut. And remember to watch. And remember to watch before you cut.